PEPFAR is the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. Um, it is coordinated and funded through the State Department and then implemented by USAID and CDC and DOD and Peace Corps in the field. Uh, so yeah, I'm here today to talk to you about DREAMS, uh, PEPFAR's partnership for adolescent girls and young women. Uh, today is International Day of the Girl Child, so I think that's appropriate. Oh, this is my slide thing, okay. So why do we focus on adolescent girls and young women? I think that we heard yesterday a lot of people discuss the why, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. But young women experience an elevated risk for HIV infection. Compared to young men, the rate of new HIV infections in young women, uh, according to our population-based HIV impact assessments, is five times greater in Zimbabwe, eight times greater in Malawi, and 14 times greater in Zambia. Um, and as we keep doing these surveys, we see this elevated risk in most of our countries. The DREAMS partnership was announced on World AIDS Day in 2014. Uh, our partners include the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Gilead Sciences, Girl Effect, Johnson & Johnson, and Vive Healthcare, some of the same partners of this conference. <laughs> so thank you to them. Uh, we are in 14 countries in Eastern and Southern Africa and Haiti. Uh, two, or a year into the DREAMS partnership, we added the DREAMS Innovation Challenge, which brought new ideas on keeping girls in school, providing prep to adolescent girls, uh, bridging girls to employment, engaging men in HIV services, and building the capacity of community-based organizations, and using data for dreams. These are our countries. Um, the pink ones are our original dreams countries, and then we added the five additional countries two years ago. This is the DREAMS core package. So the theory around DREAMS is that um, girls should receive multiple interventions to be able to prevent HIV. So we want to not just impact the girl, but we want to impact her community, strengthen her family, and reduce the risk of her sex partners. So you can see the interventions that impact each of those areas. So for instance, we're trying to keep her in, in school. We're trying to increase the contraceptive method mix. Uh, we're trying to have youth-friendly health services, make sure that she's tested, make sure she's in a safe spaces program. Um, we're also trying to impact her community, so community mobilization and norms change. And then we have additive funding that was for increasing treatment for men in DREAMS districts and um, increasing circumcision. Now that money is not DREAMS money, that's just pet bar money. These are our latest achievements and results. Uh, DREAMS has reached over two and a half million adolescent girls and young women. We, through our monitoring for DREAMS, uh, we are, so one of the main goals of DREAMS is to make sure that recruit, we're recruiting the most vulnerable girls. But we have found through our implementation science that we're not, we're reaching vulnerable girls, but we're, perhaps we're not reaching the most, the most vulnerable girls. Um, so we're gathering our team's vulnerability assessments that they use in each country to assess where improvements can be made. Um, the teams report a focus on layering. Layering is a little bit difficult to measure and some of our teams have, uh, have systems in place to measure layering, uh, but not all of them do. And so in the future, um, we're going to be requiring our teams to have uh, a layering, to, to be able to measure their layering. Is that how much time I have? Okay. It's not, okay. <laughs> uh, PEPFAR, so changes in the DREAMS districts that we reported on World AIDS Day 2017. Uh, PEPFAR data showed significant declines in new HIV diagnoses among adolescent girls and young women in nearly all of the DREAMS interventions districts, we showed some decline. Uh, preliminary analyses suggest that implementing in rural areas and full geographic coverage may have contributed to better results. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into that. Thank you. <laughs> so these were our results that we reported on World AIDS Day. So the, these are the districts, so you can see that 100% of the districts in Mozambique and Malawi 
had a greater than 25% decline in new HIV diagnoses. And you can see that 80% of the districts in Uganda, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Eswatini, and Kenya had that same decline, and then less than half of the districts in Lesotho, South Africa, and Zambia. This is our original 10 Dreams countries, not the five new ones. These are the districts that had a greater than 25% decline. Uh, eventually, I think these slides will be online, and you'll be able to get a better look at these districts. I know they're probably kind of difficult to read. These are districts that had a less than 25% decline, including here in South Africa. Uh, so part of our, what we saw from our results is that the declines by district type, uh, we saw that the rural districts tended to have a larger decline. And so we're trying to understand why that is, why um, we didn't seem to have as much of an impact in the more urban districts. Uh, in terms of coverage within the DREAMS districts, uh, we also saw a higher decline in the districts where we had better coverage. The duration of implementation didn't really seem to have an impact. So it really seemed to be more on the quality of the program and the coverage rather than when they actually got the program started. So how do we how do we all together scale programs like DREAMS and how can we improve DREAMS and what's next? So I think the most important thing that we've learned is that comprehensive prevention interventions work for adolescent girls and young women most of the time in most places. And the factors that explain the differences in new diagnoses between districts are sometimes could be the number of implementing partners, the presence of a coordinating partner, the difference in circumcision and treatment coverage for young men, and the fidelity to the DREAMS evidence base. Um, what might explain some of our difficulties in the urban settings, and these are the questions that, sorry, these are some of the questions that remain. So how are we, how, are we, how can we figure out why we're doing better in some districts versus other districts? And what programming changes can we maybe make in urban areas to, to be more effective? So part of this is that we are going to uh, all the 10 original Dreams countries, and we're doing deep dives into and visiting districts, some which had a uh, greater than 25% decline, some that didn't. And we're trying to understand what are the differences between these districts, what are the differences between these programs, and we're looking at what part of the core package are they doing, are they not doing, um, who are their primary partners, what is the rigor of their implementation monitoring, how are they recruiting the most vulnerable girls, how can we be better? And so that's a picture of us in Tanzania. I think I'm wearing the same outfit, so don't tell anybody. Uh, I took that risk. I had to represent for dreams. Uh, so we actually, I'm going to, from here, I'm going to Malawi to do one of these visits. The, uh, so the sustained investment, expanded reach, and program improvements for DREAMS. We are, have institutionalized DREAMS. So DREAMS started as a special, a special project, as a centrally funded project. And we are now, we've now incorporated DREAMS into our annual planning process. So the countries are told every year, this is how much you're going to be spending on DREAMS. Um, we've expanded from 10 to 15 countries. We've invested over $760 million into DREAMS over the past four years. Um, and we have gone from five countries originally implementing PrEP to 11 countries implementing PrEP. Uh, the expansion within the DREAMS countries, so some of the DREAMS countries have broadened geographic coverage beyond the origi original DREAMS districts, and some of them are actually just expanding within their districts. So for instance, South Africa has very large districts, so we're trying to just get coverage to those entire districts rather than moving on to new districts. Uh, we really need help in expanding DREAMS. It's not going to just be up to PEPFAR alone to be able to do DREAMS. 
Um, Mozambique and Uganda were the only countries that expanded in COP18. Uh, the, that's our annual planning process. Um, the, the criteria for expansion was that they achieved their target coverage in relevant PEPFAR MER indicators, which, is our, which are indi our indicators that we use to measure our program. And it should show progress towards impact using the modeled impact data that I just showed you. And then to evaluate the efficiency as recommended by the efficiency questions that we put out for them. So at this point, we, we don't, DREAM should be implemented as a package and not as any sort of dreams light or dreams like program. It really, uh, we, really the layering of the interventions is really important. So like I was saying, we can't really do it alone. Um, PEPFAR is not in every district in every country and DREAMS is certainly not even in every PEPFAR district. So our countries have really taken the lead. South Africa has She Conquers, um, where they've expanded throughout South Africa to do this type of work. Um, the Global Fund has come in to support a number of our countries in this. Um, Eswatini has also gone national and Malawi is expanding as well. Uh, we really can't do dreams without civil society and the input from adolescent girls and young women. Um, we have dreams ambassadors in our countries that are champions for dreams and who are often some either former or current beneficiaries of dreams uh, who are our champions and who are involved in a lot of decision making processes. So civil society input helped create the innovation challenge which I spoke about before. Um, adolescent girls have inputted into a number of our programming decisions, um, including all, of, we, had, we had a big showing at IAS in 2016, which they helped us with. Um, and in DC, we have regular meetings with civil society. When we do these DREAMS visits, we make sure to, to speak to civil society and we always meet with DREAMS ambassadors. Uh, and then we also have civil society input into our, our annual reviews, our COP reviews. So going forward, um, we are continuously learning. Dreams is still really new. Um, and so we're learning, we're making modifications along the way, which isn't always easy for our countries. Um, and we increase, have increased attention to the needs and programs, programming support to adolescent girls in large urban areas, Johannesburg, Durban, Lusaka, Nairobi, where we haven't had as much of an impact. We're increasing the collaboration between our Orphans and Vulnerable Children program and DREAMS. And we have a laser focus on ending sexual violence among nine to 14 year old girls and increasing secondary school transition and matric matriculation. This is sort of an overview of how DREAMS and OVC work together. Um, our OVC program is a long standing PEPFAR program that's been doing this type of work and inspired some of the DREAMS work but the programs really need to work together better and make sure that they're covering the right girls. Uh, this is the work that we're doing to prevent sexual violence and HIV, which has become an increasing focus for our office. Um, primary prevention of sexual violence and early sexual debut. Um, this is really wordy, <laughs> um, but I'm gonna read it for you guys. Uh, so it's the focus act of activities on preventing risk before it begins. So preventing sexual violence in any form of coercive, forced, or non-consensual sex in the community, preventing early sexual debut, supporting healthy choices, and helping communities and families to surround these youth with support and education. All these activities must be grounded in evidence-based prevention programming. We're also reducing sexual risk, focusing activities on helping youth reduce risk or consequences of exposure to risk. So reducing the number of partners, using condoms, using PrEP, and access to post-violence care. So each of these is aimed at the appropriate age group. So that's it for me, thank you.